Any time. Oh, sorry. Um, okay. In this video, we're going to be going over the Durst Laboratory 1200. It's located in the gang dark room. It's one of three different kinds of enlargers that you can be using. It's located at station eight and one, as well as all of the senior dark rooms. So we're going to be using it as if it's set up uh, for 35 millimeter printing. And that is how it should always be set up. So when you come to it, it should be set up exactly like this. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that it is correct. And there's a few components, a condenser box, a negative carrier, and a lens. Those are the three components that you need to check. So the first one for a negative carrier, to remove it, just pull out. And you can see that in our negative carrier, the size of the opening is the same size as a 35 millimeter negative. So that part is correct. The condenser box is what takes your light and makes it the correct size for your film. So I'll pull it out so you can see it is labeled 35 millimeter. So that is correct. The last part is your lens and it should always read 50 millimeter for 35 millimeter film. If you forget what kind of lens that you need, at each of the stations there's a little sign that tells you 50 millimeter film, or sorry, 50 millimeter lens is for 35 millimeter film. And you can see that the other two lenses you can also use, but it's best just to start with a 50 millimeter and go from there. That's good. Okay. Yeah, it sounds good. I'm just going to keep it going. I'll just cut it. Okay, out. okay. So, what's next? Uh, loading the negative in. So, we're going to go out to the other room. So, when it's time to load your negative into the negative carrier, we've actually brought that right out into the finishing room at one of the light tables. Uh, for this one, it, the light switch is on the side, and you just turn that on. And at that point, you can see all of your negatives. One thing I like to do before I actually load it in is double check with my loop or my magnifier that it's in focus. And it's easier to do that um, ahead of time rather than making a print and wondering why it's not in focus. To do that, look for things like crisp lines, if there's any scratches or dust um, or dirt that may be there that you have to make sure you get off. So it looks good and sharp. Before I take my negative out, I'm going to grab this anti-static cloth that's clearly labeled photo. If you ever find one that's labeled photo, there should be one at each um, light table. Do not use it on your negatives because it is designed for and used for wiping this. So you want to wipe this off first and never use that on your negatives. You can use the one that you got in your kit or at the bookstore. There we go. You can see it's in much nicer condition. So the next thing we're going to do is take our negative out. You're handling the film by the edge, the sprocket holes, not in the image area. Any fingerprints, dust, dirt that are in the image area will be enlarged with the image. So the next thing you're going to do is wipe the light table, lay your glass down, and then just with the weight of your um, anti-static cloth, you're just going to rub over the surface. And then you're going to lift that up, wipe again, and flip it, and do the same thing. So it's more about an electric charge that is taking the dust off of the surface of your negative, not a physical rubbing it off. So next up, I'm going to double check that I have the emulsion side down, so the dull side facing down and shiny side facing up. Another indicator that you have it in the correct um, way is that you can read the edge of the film. So I can see that it's Ilford HP5 plus and my number along the bottom. 
So I'm going to take my negative. I usually just rotate it. And the reason I do that is it looks right side up when I'm printing. Um, you don't have to do it. It's just personal preference. And oftentimes you'll find little bits of electrical tape inside your negative carrier already. Reuse those. Um, so once you get your negative lined up, so I can see just a bit of light all the way around. Others might crop just ever so slightly all the way around. And once I get it in place, I'm just going to take that electrical tape and hold it down. So now when I'm going back into the dark room, it's not going to move. So we've got that and we're ready to go. So now our negative is in our negative holder and we've checked that out on the light table where we've loaded it. It's clean and ready to put back in. So you can always double check that the shiny side is facing up and the dull side is facing down or the emulsion side. So you can just load this back in and it just pushes in till it clicks. So once you have your negative in, uh, it's time to print. So you need to get out uh, some things from your drawer. All of the stations are set up so that all of the components for printing are there. So you don't need to be taking from other stations. So you have a grain magnifier, a piece of cardboard, a piece of glass, which we don't need right now, and an easel. The other thing that's in the drawer, which you should get in the habit of doing, is my box of paper and a contact sheet. So the first thing you're going to do is decide on how big you want your print to be. And that's where the easel comes in. So I'm going to do six by eight. So if we look at our easel, it says lift to adjust. So we're just going to lift it up. And if the width is eight, I'm going to move this bar until eight shows up here. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on the top, eight. And then the height is six. So I'm going to set both of those to six. And the reason you want to have a contact sheet is to focus on uh, because the thickness of the paper will affect the focus of the image. And just for demonstration purposes, for loading it, we'll do this in the light. Uh, you'll notice that there are three bars underneath when you lift up the easel. So for eight by 10, that matches with the middle one. You tuck your paper underneath the edge and you'll notice that it sits nicely and square. Then when you lower this down, and just to show you, this isn't something that you need to do, but if I do this with my marker on the back of my contact sheet, you'll see that our image is going to be perfectly centered and square on the paper. So I'll just tuck that back in for now. And the next thing I'm going to do when you're setting it up is just like on your camera, your aperture setting is on the lens of your enlarger. And the numbers that you see here are similar to that on your camera. So the lower the number, so 2.8, the bigger the opening of the lens. So more light comes through than if we have it set at the smallest opening or 16. So we wanna see what we're doing so we're gonna open it as bright as possible. And then we're going to turn the timer on and you can reference our timer video if you uh, are unsure how to use this. We'll switch our timer to focus and at that point you'll see that we have a light on here. I'm gonna get the lights. So now that we have the lights off, um, we have checked that our enlarging lens is open, bright as possible, lights on. So I can kind of see that on the back of my contact sheet or a blank piece of paper um, that I can't really see the image. So I need to adjust the height and focus 
So I'm going to unlock it and lower that down till I start to see kind of blurring lines. And then from there, I'm going to adjust the larger focus. And you can see maybe that you can start to see an image here. And then I'm going to take over with the fine tuning of the focus. So you can see that coming in and out of focus. So what looks good to your eye might be pretty good, might be decent. Um, however, I'm just going to lower this down. I'm cropping a lot of the image out and fine focus again. So it's a bit of back and forth trying to figure out how much of the image you want in, if you want to crop anything, um, and then refocusing. And sometimes it's good to just do a test print to make sure you have all of the information. If you want a clean edge, you end up cropping about an eighth of an inch or half a centimeter all the way around your image. Just keep that in mind and it gives you a bit of flexibility. In terms of focus, maybe we'll use this one. This is another um, focus that you can use. It's a bit larger and maybe easier to see it on screen. It basically magnifies the image area and allows you to then focus with more accuracy. So right about here. There go. The grain magnifier you won't see um, on a video, but it's used basically the same way as this larger one. And you look through here, the light shines on the mirror, and you make those adjustments. And you're literally looking for the grain of the film. So it looks like, if I was to describe, sand. Once you see kind of a sand pattern, uh, that's when you're actually seeing the grain of the film. And then your image is as focused as it can be. So once you get that set up, it's focused, one thing that I like to do is tape my easel to the surface of my station in case I knock it. Because if you knock it and then go to print, you can see that it's going to fall out of alignment. So you can do that if you like. The next thing we're going to do is make an adjustment of our aperture. So we had it at 2.8 and that's just to get it set up. So we're going to start somewhere in the middle around 5.6 or 8. And then the next step is to set our timer. So we're going to switch it from focus to time. And it's a good idea to start with about increments of 5 seconds. And from here, you take out your piece of paper. And this is where you're going to be using your paper that uh, is light sensitive, only open in safe light. And we'll do a test trip. So that will be a separate video.